Hello guys. So in this particular video, we will see how we can implement a custom ensemble machine learning model using sklearn library. So we already know what ensemble is. Ensemble is clubbing multiple machine learning models uh, in order to give the final prediction. Okay. And mainly there are two types bagging and boosting on which I have made separate video. So you can watch that in order to get an overview of what ensemble machine learning models are. Okay. But in this particular video, we will club multiple different models. So let's say we will be using logistic regression, we will be using support vector machine, we will be using multinomial naive base classifier. And in the end, we will make use of something called as voting classifier available in sklearn library. And that voting classifier will take in all these three models that I have told just now. SVM, multinomial naive base and logistic regression. And then it will use those trained model in order to give us a final output okay and for this purpose we will be making use of the data set for email spam classification uh, i will give the, uh, the data set link in the description and also i will give the link of this notebook in the description of this video so now let's get started so i have already implemented this uh, email spam classification using multinomial na naive base in my earlier video we will extend the same data set uh, by using multiple models and then we will combine different models to make use of ensemble technique okay so let's get started here i have read the data set already okay uh, this has uh, actually two classes spam and not spam okay and that is denoted by the column label num okay and zero represents it's a normal email one represents it's a spam email okay so what i have done here i have read the data file i have dropped this unnamed zero and label column so i would be dealing with only text column and label num column so this label num will be our target feature or target column and text will be used as our feature okay so after dropping unnamed zero and label column i will be left with only these two columns text and label num and if i want to check how the distribution is among the classes spam and not spam so this is how it is so around 3672 records or emails are not spam and 1499 emails are spam so it is a imbalanced data set right and overall we have 5171 records out of which 3000 odd are not spam and 1499 are spam okay so this is just a visual way to check the count using c bond so i have just used the count plot here okay so there is nothing much in this particular visualization now what we will do we will do some pre processing so what are the pre processing steps involved for anything involved with the text like this subject enroll methanol right so these are all our emails right it has subjects it has body so it is basically a textual data that we have it's not a ordered data or not a tabular data right so we have to convert these texts into numbers in one or other way right so for this what we will do we will first pre-process it so when i say pre-processing it uh, what i will do i will just keep only those things which are between small case a to z and capital case a to z i will remove all these punctuations all the special funny symbols and also the numbers so mainly i will keep only the alphabets whether it's uh, lower case or upper case okay so let's start doing those steps one by one so so what i'll do i will import regular expression module so i would need this in order to filter these texts wherein i only need to have the alphabets i will make use of regular expression that is re okay and uh, this is the stop words uh, module which comes with nltk corpus this will be helpful for us in removing the stop words most frequently used words which may or which may not give some weightage in order to classify the text whether it's a spam or not spam okay so those words like was is the etc right so those commonly used words will be removed with the help of stop words and then stemmer uh, i will be using porter stemmer in order to stem every word to its root level okay so if you want to know more about stemming and lemmatization i have created a separate video for that you can go ahead and watch that video okay but that's not a prerequisite in order to understand this particular implementation okay so first step what i'll do i will initiate a 
object of this Porter stemmer class. So I will say stemmer is equal to Porter stemmer. Okay. And I will just initialize it. Then what I need to do? I need to scan through each of these texts. So what are these texts? These are individual emails. Okay. So what I will do? I will create a list called mails. This list will have all these emails one by one after pre-processing. Okay. So when I say after pre-processing, this will not have any numbers. This will have all the words uh, truncated to its root word and it will also have only the alphabets. It will not have any funny symbols or numbers. Okay. So those things will be stored in this particular mails list. Now what I will do? I will loop in through all these emails one by one. Okay. So how I can do that? So for that, what I will say for i in range of length of this particular data frame. So length of df will be 5171. Okay. So I will be looping through each and every individual email. Okay. So once I loop through this, I will start my pre-processing. So what I will say text is equal to re dot sub. So whatever I want, I will specify in a square bracket. So I want a to z, okay, small letters and also I would like to maintain or retain all the letters which are capital A, capital A to capital Z, okay. So this is what I actually want and apart from this, so this particular caret symbol here is actually the negation of this. So whatever is there apart from these characters, I want to remove them. So how I can remove them? I will just replace it with the empty space. Okay. So that's what I have done here. So if I find anything apart from these symbols, small letters or capital letters A to Z, I will replace them with empty space. Okay. Then I need to apply this on something, right? So what is that? DF of text, correct? So DF of text and I have to apply this to each and every individual email, right? So for that, what I'll say, df of, so sorry, it's a cap, small letter, df of text of i, okay? So with this particular line here, I will be traversing through individual emails. I will be retaining only alphabet characters, whether it's small case or uppercase. So anything other than the alphabets, it will be replaced with an empty space. So that's what I have specified here. So this is the first step of pre-processing. So next what I will do, after I have retained only alphabets from that particular email, I will convert everything into lowercase. So for that, what I will say, text is equal to text dot lower, right? So this will convert all the alphabets into lowercase letters, right? Then what I will do? After I have converted into lowercase, I will split the entire email into individual words. So for that, what I will do, text is equal to text dot split. So by default, split will apply at the white space character. So wherever it finds the white space, it splits that string and separates out that word before the white space and puts it in a list. So similarly, it traverses the entire text and it separates out the end each word in that particular sentence and returns us the list of tokens or list of words present in this particular email. Okay. So this is what this dot split is doing. Then what I will do, I will apply this stemming on individual words that I have obtained after the splits. So these individual words are also called as tokens. Okay. So for this, for applying stemming, I will make use of something called as list comprehension. So this is simple. So let me just write that stemmer dot stem word for word in text if I have, I also told you I have to remove the stop words right so I will also remove the stop words while stemming so if in this particular text list if there are any stop words I do not want to stem them or or even I do not want to retain them I want to drop them so what I will do I will say stem all those words for the words in text okay for each word in this particular text list if that particular word is not in stop words correct so stop words dot 
words and language would be english okay so this will remove all the stop words from this particular list okay and then it will convert each of the other remaining words into its root word that is stemmed word and i will get my another new list okay so after i do this i will construct the sentence using the individual tokens okay so how i will do that text is equal to i will join with a white space each word that i have right join text so that's it then what i will say mails dot append and i will append this text so if you are not sure what this actually is let me explain it to you in a simple way so i'll execute this let me open up a scribble note scribble link so i can explain you what are these pre processing steps and how they actually work okay so let it open up okay fine so coming to this particular pre processing steps so what i what i did first i first did re dot sub right so this will so let's say my name is shankar so this is a sentence what i am trying to pre process okay so first step is to retain only the alphabets right so if i have some okay so let me also have my some number here my name is shankar and my age is 33 okay so this is a sentence which i have to pre process okay and now the first step is re dot sub right so what it will do i have given something like this a to z and a to z so if i find anything apart from this i will remove them right and i will replace them with white space so after applying this particular pre processing step this sentence will become my name is shankar and my age is so since 33 is a number not part of this a to z is it will be dropped remote so this will be my new sentence after i have applied this particular regular expression okay so then what i am doing i am converting everything into lower case right so how I, how i am doing that so i am storing this in a variable called as text and then what i'll say i'll say text dot lower right so this will be converted into my name is everything will be in lower case shankar and my age is so this is how my text will look like after converting everything into lower case letters then what i'm applying i'm applying split so what i'll say i'm saying text is equal to text dot split so i am applying split method on this particular sentence so what split does it will return as a list like this my name is shankar and my age is okay so this is what split actually does so this will return me a list and i'm storing it in a variable called as text then what i'm doing i'm applying stemming stemming and while applying stemming i'm also checking for stop words so in this case the stop words would be is and and could be my also part of stop words but let's not take my into consideration now okay so what i'll do i will convert all those words into its root form that is stemmed form but i will consider only those words which are not stop words so in the sense i am removing stop words also in this case if i consider is and as my stop words is and will be removed so the text list would be looking something like this so my name 
So ease is done away with because ease is a stop word. I would have removed it already. My name Shankar and will be removed because it's a stop word, right? My age and ease will be removed because ease is also a stop word. So after removing the stop words, this will how my list looks like and then I will apply stemming on individual words. So I do not actually know how these individual words look like after stemming. So you can try it out yourself. Okay. So let's think that these are already stemmed and this is my end result. So in the end what I am doing, I am using something like text is equal to white space dot join text. So what it does, out of this list, it will construct a sentence for me. So the resulting sentence would be, this will result in my name Shankar my age. So this will be a string now. Then in the end what I am doing, I am appending this particular string in a males list. Males dot append. Okay. And this is my text. I am appending this. Okay. So this is what I am doing as part of my pre-processing. Okay. So let me just open that. So here that is what I am doing. So it is pre-processing. Right. So once it is complete, we will go to our next step. So, what is next step? We will convert these texts into numbers by using a technique called as bag of words and then we will train our machine learning models. Okay. So, let us wait for the completion of pre-processing and then we will train the models. Okay. So, now it has completed pre-processing. Now, what we will see? We will just verify whether we have got all the emails or not. So, Generally, the length of this mails list should be equal to the length of the data frame, right? So, let us quickly verify that. So, length of mails. Okay. So, it says 5171 and okay. So, we had 5171 emails initially also in our data set. So, we are good. Okay. So, now what we will do? We will convert these texts into numbers. So, if I just check my mails list, so this is how it looks like, right? So, each email will be appended into this particular mails list. Okay. Each mail will be an element. So, mails is a list with 5171 elements. So, here the elements are emails. Okay. So, now what we will do? We will convert these words into bag of words. And for that, we need to import some libraries and also then we will train our models. Right. So, let us import the required libraries now. So, for that, I will just copy it here. I have ready import statements. I will just copy them. So, I am importing count vectorizer. So, I do not want tfidf vectorizer because I am not using that in this particular case. Then I will import train test split because we need to split this data in order to train and test the model, evaluate the model. And first model would be multinomial naive base. So, then what we will do? We will also import logistic regression. So, let us import logistic regression. And then let us also import support vector machine. Okay. So let us import SVM as well. So these are the models that I will be training. And then in the end, we will combine all these three models to get our ensemble machine learning model. Okay. So let us first convert, let us first get the bag of words out of this mails list. So how to get the bag of words? So let me just give it a heading bag of words. Okay. So, for that, I will be making use of count vectorizer class. So, what I will do, I will initialize the object called as CV. I can name it anything because it is count vectorizer, I am naming it as CV. So, it is equal to count vectorizer and I will set max features to let us say 5000. Okay. And I do not want it to convert to lowercase because I already have everything in lowercase. Okay. So, now I have my object of class count vectorizer initialized. So, now what I have to do? I will say cv dot fit transform on males. Okay. So, I have to say fit transform on males and I will convert this into a numpy array to array and I will store the resulting count vectorizers in a variable called as x. Okay. So, now if I execute it, 
I will get my x array and if I check it, it will be a numpy array and it will be all numbers. So, if I check the shape, x dot shape, 5171 emails we have. So, we have 5171 rows and I am restricting to use only 5000 features when I am constructing bag of words. So, I am getting only 5000 columns. Okay. So, this is how we convert text into bag of words using count vectorizer. Okay. Now, what I will do? I will take my y out. So, y is my target variable, right? So, y will be df of label num. So, this is my y. So, y is already in the form of numbers 0 and 1, right? So, we do not have to do anything for that. So, next what we will do? We will split this x and y into train and test set. So, for that we will make use of train test split method, right? So, I will say x train comma x test comma y train comma y test is equal to train test split. I need x, y, I need to specify my test size. So, I will say 0.2, okay, 0 0.20. So, 20% of my data set I will keep aside for testing. And then I will say random state is equal to 42, okay. So, now I have my data set split into two two sizes one is two blocks one is for training and one is for evaluating those trained model from the particular test set so let's check how many records we have got x train dot shape so for training we have 4136 emails and for testing we will have 1035 emails okay so now let's go ahead and train our first model that is multinomial naive base multinomial naive base model. So, I have not covered this naive base concept yet. I will cover that in my another video, but we will first train this model now. So, let me initialize the model and call it as MNB. So, we should not use capital letters, but for the sake of simplicity, we will for the sake of differentiation uh, later to use it in uh, voting classifier to construct the ensemble. Let me make use of capital letters as a variable name. Okay. So, MNB is equal to multinomial NB. Okay. So, I will make use of all the default parameters. I will not worry much about that because the goal of this video is to learn how we can construct our custom ensemble machine learning models. Okay. So, now I will train this MNB model. So, for that I will say MNB dot fit x train comma y train. So, now I have my model trained. Then I will check the score MNB dot score and I will first check the score on training data, how it is performing on the training data set. Okay, so it is giving me 96.39% accuracy. Okay, so what I will do next, I will also print the confusion metrics so that I will have the clear idea how many how many emails are getting misclassified out of both the classes. Okay, so for that I will import confusion metrics method. Okay. Then I will say print confusion matrix. So, for this, uh, I need to have the predictions. So, first let me predict on the training data set itself. So, y, y train predictions. So, y train pred equal to mnb dot predict and I will pass my x train. So, for this, I need to pass actual values and the predicted values. So, first will be actual values y train and then I need to pass my predicted values. So, this is how the confusion matrix looks like. So, it is not doing bad. So, 2820 emails are getting correct classifiedly as not spam and 110 mails even though they are not spam they are getting classified as spam right and similarly 1167 emails are correctly getting classified as spam. And 39 emails, even though they are spam, they are getting classified as not spam. So, that is okay. We can accept this. Let us see how it is performing on test data. So, for that what I will do, I will first evaluate the accuracy. I will check the accuracy on test set. So, x test and y test. So, if I check this, okay. So, it is giving me 95% accurate results on test set also. 
So now what I'll do, I will check the confusion matrix similarly on the test set. So here I'll say Y test spread and I'll pass X test and then I will print the confusion matrix. So it will be Y test and Y test spread. So that's the only difference. And now I have my class confusion matrix here. So similarly, you can interpret these results. Okay. So 31 non-spam are getting classified as spam and 13 spam are getting classified as non-spam. So this is the basic gist of confusion matrix. So now what we will do, we will, uh, if you want, you can also print out the classification report. But let's not do that. Let's go ahead and train our logistic regression model. So let's train logistic regression model. So for this, let me call it as LRM, logistic regression model, logistic regression. So all default parameters, nothing fancy. Okay. So what I'll do, I'll just train this logistic regression model dot fit x train comma y train. So now I have my logistic regression model trained and I will check the score on this. So let's see how logistic regression is performing okay, on at least training data set Y train. Okay, surprisingly, it is giving me great result. So it's better than multinomial naive base 99.83% accurate. So let's check similarly as we have done for multinomial naive base. So we will check predictions on train data set y train spread on logistic regression model is equal to lrm dot predict i will pass x train okay then what i will say i will say print confusion matrix confusion matrix y train and y train so i'll just copy this y train spread lr okay so Okay, so this is doing much better than multinomial naive base at least on training data set. So let's see how it is performing on test data set. Okay, so first let's check the accuracy on test data set. So X test and Y test. Okay, so 97.97 accuracy. So it is overall it's better than multinomial naive base. Okay, so I do not know if we'll be able to improve this further when we combine and get our ensemble model but let's check that okay because this is actually very good performance all right all right so let's see so this is on test set so similarly we can check the confusion matrix on the test set also y test spread lr and i'll say x test okay so then i will print the confusion matrix so y test y test spread lr okay so it's doing better than mnb even on test data set so this is logistic regression model so now what we'll do we will train another model support vector machine okay so and then we will combine support vector machine logistic regression and multinomial naive base to have our ensemble machine learning model ready okay so let me just give it a heading support vector machine classifier so let me say yes svc support vector classifier equal to svm dot svc support vector classifier so this is what i want so now i'll say svc dot fit i'll pass x train comma y train so now i will have my svm model trained this may take a bit longer when compared to logistic regression and multinomial naive base because how support vector machine works. So if you do not know the in-depth detail, I have made two separate videos on support vectors, uh, one with the hard margin and another one with the soft margin. Please go and watch those videos. You will get complete understanding end to end how support vector works actually. Okay. Uh, uh, for your sake, I will give the link for those videos in the description. Okay. Okay, now we have our support vector classifier model trained. We will see how it is getting performed. At least on train set, first we will see how it is performing. SVC dot core x train comma y train. So this 
let's see this will take a while because it has to predict and then give us the results using support vectors so it will take a little long time compared to logistic regression and other algorithms okay okay so now the training is complete and it is giving me 97.63 percent accurate results on training set okay so it this is also doing much better than multinomial naive base okay so let's check how it is performing on test set now okay so for that what we will do svc dot score x test and y test so let's see how much accurate the results are okay so on test set is it is giving me 95.65 percent accuracy so what was it with mnb multinomial naive base it's similar 95.74 with mnb and 95.65 marginal drop in the accuracy so we can actually ignore that but for this let's check the confusion matrix on test set how it is performing so let me say y test predictions on support vector classifier is equal to svc dot predict i will pass x test so then i will print my confusion matrix confusion matrix y test and it will be y test predict so if i execute it okay so not bad support vector machine is also doing good so now what we will do we will construct our custom ensemble right so let me give it a heading custom ensemble model to classify the emails whether they are spam or not spam right so for this what we will do we will import something called as voting classifier have i imported that no right okay so let's import that so all i have to do is from sklearn dot ensemble import voting classifier i am not doing with dealing with regression problem right now i am dealing with classification problem so i will import voting classifier so for this voting classifier to work we have to store all these models in a list so we have trained three models now right multinomial naive bias logistic regression and support vector classifier so we will store those models in a list so let me call it as models and this has to be a list of tuples so the first or first element in this tuple would be the name some string we have in order to identify which model we are supplying so first one was multinomial naive base right so let me just call it as mnb and so or to avoid the confusion let me say naive base okay and the model variable was mnb right so this is my first element in the models list so similarly the second element would be the second model we tried was logistic regression right so i'll say log regression and the model name was lrc if i'm okay it's lrm logistic regression model so this is my second model right and the third one would be my support vector so i'll say support vector and the model name was svc correct so now i have constructed a list with the model and the names as a list of tuples right so then what i'll do i will create an object of voting classifier class i will call it as custom model okay is equal to voting classifier and i will just need to pass this models list here okay so now if i if i pass this and execute it i will have my custom model object created now what i have to do i have to train this custom model so now this is a model with three different machine learning algorithms right so this custom model so let me just show you how it looks like custom model is a mod one big model with three machine learning models in it so the first one is multinomial naive base model second one is logistic regression model and the third one is support vector machine model right so now what it does it trains these things okay and then it will predict so while predicting it will combine the outputs of these three models and it will use something called as majority voting 
majority voting. So how it predicts the final output? So let's say a test data set comes in. So mail comes in and this will be passed through this custom model. So multinomial naive base will let's say it predicts it as a spam and let's say logistic regression is predicting it as not spam and SVM is also predicting it as not spam. So in the end this custom model will predict by taking the majority vote as its count. So out of these three majority of the models are predicting this mail as not spam. Two are predicting as it as not spam. One is predicting it as spam. So majority of the models are predicting it as not spam. So the final output of this custom model would be not spam. Okay. So this is how the predictions will work in case of ensemble. And now we will train these models using fit method on our custom model. Custom model dot fit fit on x train and y train. We will make use of the same data set, right? So now what it will do? It will train all these three models MNB, LRM and SVC. Okay. So let's wait for it to get completed and then we will see how it is performing. Okay, so now it has completed the training. Now we will see the score. So for that, again, we can make use of custom model dot score. I will check how it is performing on training test first. Okay, training set. So for this, uh, again, it will make use of majority voting, right? Because it's a voting classifier. So after it predicts everything, it will give us the accuracy of this particular custom ensemble model for us. So let's see what the accuracy we would get. Okay, so on training set, it is giving me an accuracy of 99.03. So if you check the performance of support vector machine on training set, it is 97.63% accurate. Logistic regression, it's 99.83% accurate. And multinomial naive base, it is 96.39% accurate on training set. So now what we will do, we will check its performance, its accuracy on test set. So for that what we will do, we will say custom model dot score x test comma y test. Right. So we will see how much accuracy we will get on test set. Okay. So we got accuracy of 97.97. So it is greater than that of support vector machine. It is same as logistic regression model and it is also greater than that of multinomial naive base. So in the end we have a custom model which we can say performing almost same as logistic regression model but performing better than support vector classifier and multinomial naive base right. So in the end we will just finish this up by printing out the confusion matrix okay. So let us for that let me say y spread test custom model okay so now i'll say custom model dot predict i will have my predictions on test data set so once i have this i will print the confusion matrix so i'll say print so confusion matrix and i will pass in y test and this particular prediction from the custom model okay great so only 18 emails which are not spam are getting classified as spam and only three emails which are actually spam are getting classified as not spam so what we are doing here we are doing a fair job in classifying the mails as spam so this is what we actually want right so we want this this particular number here to be as less as possible or even if it's zero it's great correct so this is what we actually want so how it is performing on uh, support vector okay so this is 11 on logistic regression it was 9 right and multinomial naive base it's 13 so our ensemble is actually doing much better than all these three individual models right so if you just look at this in the confusion matrix form right so i'll just write it here so actual and predicted 
these are the values we have uh, 0 1 0 1 right so if actually is 0 predicted is 0 okay so let us call it as true positive if predicted is 0 uh, okay so in order to understand it in a true positive and true negative way I will just reverse these things right so zeros and ones so you will not get confused so I will say actual here and predicted here 1 0 1 0 if actual is 1 predicted is 1 it is true positive ok actual is 1 predicted is 0 it is false uh, you can say false positive right uh, 0 uh, act, just give me a second let me get the names properly ok so in this case this would be false negative ok so why because actual is a spam but it predicted not spam so it is a false negative actually 0 not a spam but predicted is spam so it is a false positive right and this will be true negative it is not a spam prediction is also not spam so it is a true negative so now what we do if some mail is not spam if it is not a spam and if we end up classifying this as spam this mail will go unnoticed and this could be a very important mail uh, which decides something major in our life right so if it is not a spam and it is getting classified as spam our model is actually making us a huge loss so this particular stuff here false positive which means actually it is not a spam but it is predicting it as a spam so this is actually a problematic for us so we have to reduce these false positives as much as possible then we can say that our model is doing a fair job so whether this custom ensemble model is doing a fair job by considering false positives so let's see so in case of multinomial naive base we had 13 false positives in case of logistic regression we had 9 false positives and in case of support vector machine we have 11 false positives by combining all these three models we were able to reduce the false positives to only three right so we can say that our custom ensemble model is actually doing a fair job right so this is performing better than rest individual three models right so this is how custom ensemble works and generally the custom ensemble model would give you better results compared to individual models okay and this is how you can implement the custom ensemble classifier using voting classifier library from scalar okay so if you guys have any questions please reach out to me in comment sections if you like the content give it a thumbs up and share it among your peers if you haven't subscribed to my channel please do subscribe till we see in the next video happy learning bye bye